It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. In 1966, a mysterious Japanese superhero first appeared on American television. His name, of course, was... Ultraman! Ultraman! When I was a wee little lad, my mom used to recommend a ton of shows that she grew up on, and of course, among them was Ultraman, of course, there was also Johnny Sockland and Flying Robot, there was the Space Giants, and other Japanese programs that were dubbed into English, and so naturally, when I was a kid, I saw Ultraman for the first time, and the rest, of course, has been history. When I was a kid, I loved the show, I loved the Speed Racer stuff. So basically, like, uh, Ultraman was the first introduction to many Americans of the various tokusatsu shows that had came to this country. The Ultraman franchise was a byproduct of a guy named A.G. Superaya. Now, A.G. Superaya was the guy behind the special effects for Godzilla, as well as many other tokusatsu movies and shows, including, but not limited to, The Mysterians, Atragon, the War of the Gagantuas, and so essentially, during the 1960s, he decided to create his own company to produce his own special effects shows, and of course, Ultraman was one of them. The story is about a group of people called the Science Space Patrol, where essentially they investigate like a lot of stuff, like paranormal activity and giant monsters. And one day, one of the members named Hayata actually died, however, he was also saved by a giant alien. The alien, of course, was called Ultraman, and so one day, like, the alien and Ultraman, essentially, like, they try to merge together to create, like, a human-alien thing to go into Ultraman mode whenever he wants to, and essentially, he fights giant monsters throughout the whole entire show. <laughs> it does kind of get repetitive sometimes, but honestly, I have no better way than to see that kind of show in that kind of way. What is so fascinating about this show besides the fact that it was like one of the first Japanese shows that actually got an American release in the 60s, is the fact that Peter Fernandez was actually the guy behind the dub. Like prior to Ultraman, he also produced the English dub for Speed Racer, and so it's pretty interesting to hear his voice in the dub. What is also fascinating is the fact that Ultraman is not the first entry in the Ultraman franchise. And matter of fact, the first entry of the Ultraman franchise was a show that was called Ultra Q. Now, basically, Ultra Q is completely different than Ultraman. Essentially, unlike Ultraman, where the show is shot entirely in color, Ultra Q was shot entirely in black and white. Also, basically, for Ultraman, every single episode, Ultraman fights against the bad guys, fighting against the monsters. However, there is no Ultraman in Ultra Q. And matter of fact, there are some episodes in Ultra Q that does in fact have monsters. However, there is no Ultraman, there is no color. Essentially, the best way to describe Ultra Q, it's a Japanese take of the Twilight Zone. Also, from what I know so far, Ultra Q also received an English dub in the past. However, it was not shown on TV. And to my knowledge, the only found episode that actually has the English dub of Ultra Q is episode 3, however, it's not released officially, not on the official DVD or Blu-ray releases, or any other place in America, or in Japanese releases. In my personal opinion, the Blu-ray sets for both Ultraman and Ultra Q are just fantastic from Mill Creek Entertainment. What I like so much about these Blu-ray editions from Mill Creek Entertainment is how basically you get all the episodes on various discs inside of a steelbook packaging and on top of the steelbook packaging what is also really cool is how all the episodes for the shows are really cheap like they're twenty dollars a pop that is really cheap to get an entire series like both series for twenty dollars a pop essentially i spent like forty dollars in total to get both shows and that my friends is a steal 
As far as the audio options for the SES, you only get Japanese audio with English subtitles. So if you're a fan of the Ultraman dub that came out in the 1960s, unfortunately, you would not get that dub on the set. What is also pretty cool about this set is that you get booklets for both shows, and they go into a lot of detail. They talk about episode guides, they go into the history of the show, they also talk about the various monsters. It's a really well deaf, really detailed booklet that you get for both shows. Overall, I recommend these Blu-ray sets from Mill Creek Entertainment. If you're a fan of Godzilla, if you're a fan of Tokusetsu, if you're a fan of Power Rangers, these sets are for you. Not only that, but they have plans to release the entire series for Ultraman. So I look forward to collect so many Blu-rays from Mill Creek Entertainment. What do you guys think about Ultraman? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler